I'm Christina Warren from Mashable.com, and today Microsoft released Internet Explorer 9. In many ways, IE9 can be seen as Microsoft's play reinventing the browser and relaunching the IE brand. So let's take a look at some of the new features and capabilities in IE9. Um, a couple of warnings, this is still a beta. I've had some issues with IE9 crashing, um, and I'm actually, this is, this is take probably 24 or 25 of this screencast, not because I messed up for once, but because the browser kept crashing. So if that happens, be prepared. I'm running this in a virtual machine, but it's got a lot of power to it. Um, so your own results may be better, they may be worse, um, but just imagine this is kind of running on, you know, uh, average laptop with a decent amount of RAM um, today. So one of the first things you, we can uh, take a look at with IE9 is that the interface has been given a big overhaul. And it, I think it's pretty clear that Microsoft has taken a lot of cues from Google and what Google did with Chrome in uh, refining the interface of IE9. For instance, um, you know, they're really focusing less on the browser itself and more on the content within the browser. So you have fewer toolbars, fewer buttons, you have less Chrome, um, so to speak, of, of you know, the window bars and whatnot, um, and, and more, of, more websites, than, more of the site itself is actually visible. And uh, so for instance, traditionally, there's been underneath this uh, search bar here, there's been a, a favorites menu in, in Internet Explorer. That's been removed. You can still access favorites from a sidebar, um, and, and you can choose to dock or undock that, but the favorites bar underneath the uh, URL bar is gone. And um, another, another thing that they've taken from Chrome is, is you have a single search and URL um, menu. So unlike Safari or let's say you know, Firefox, this is Firefox 4, you don't have two separate uh, areas for the URL and search. It's all um, one bar, which actually works pretty well, I think. And like I said, clearly they've taken a lot of cues from Chrome. I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's the right direction to go in. And I think that's something that consumers more and more are wanting. Another area that's very similar to Chrome and actually for that matter, Safari and Opera is that when you want to go to a new tab, you can see previously open pages, um, sites that you like and you can see how recently they were updated and you can choose to add or remove different sites from um, those tabs and and that makes it pretty nice um, just to kind of be able to view hey you know this is where I was before and whatnot so for instance I was viewing Mashable before I can go right back to Mashable without having to click on my favorites without having to click uh, on anything so um, that's that's another feature that you see with with Chrome for instance you know if I go to a new tab in Chrome then I get you know, uh, it pulls up other things that I've accessed before. One of the big new features with Internet Explorer 9, aside from the new interface, aside from the better HTML5 and CSS3 support and, and better standards compatibility, is that uh, Microsoft has really kind of taken on this notion of being able to pin tabs or, or, or pin sites to the Windows 7 um, taskbar. So, um, what other browsers usually consider this is something called uh, single site browsers, which means that you can kind of create a browser um, to and on itself of just a certain website. With a, on, on Mac, a popular program to do that with is Fluid. Um, Mozilla has its own kind of implementation called Prism. You can actually do that within Chrome as well. Um, but Microsoft's implementation is actually pretty cool. For instance, Twitter, which, and, and how you create these, by the way, is you go to a website, like we'll, we'll, we'll choose Twitter because that's a, that's a common site that people use. And we will drag Twitter to our taskbar. And I'm gonna unpen this so that we can first, as I said, this kind of, uh, this crashes and I swear I should really stop doing some of these demos for some of these things. One of the interesting things, one of the things that I, I have to give Microsoft credit for is even though things are crashing more, the browser will try to save itself. So you might have a, a thing might come up and say, hey, we're, we're crashing or, or it has to go away, but you won't actually lose the browser itself or it'll reload itself pretty quickly. So you can pin to the taskbar Twitter now, for instance. And as you can see, the toolbar has changed a little bit. I see the tweet right here, and I, I just see the Twitter page, and this will constantly be kind of, um, you know, updating itself. But what's really cool is when I right-click on this, 
tasks, I can go to a new tweet. I can, um, so for instance, if I'm just you know, browsing around, I can right click here, I can go to a new tweet. It'll take me directly to you know, a, a place for me to send a new tweet. Um, so I can I can say you know doing a an IE9 screencast I can also instantly go to my direct messages or to any of my app mentions or to um, you know other aspects so that, that's a pretty cool feature, and I think that that's something that kind of makes it other makes it even better than just a, a single site browser because there are these little add-ons available. Amazon.com, we've done the same thing. If I right-click on Amazon.com, I can check order status. I can manage my account. You can go to your shopping cart. You can see bestsellers, gold box deals. You can do all kinds of really cool stuff, which, which really gives, I think, a lot more um, usability to websites you visit often so that you don't have to pull up the same things all the time um, because they're actually tasks related to the different pages, and, and that's a pretty nice feature. Standard support is, is another thing that's actually greatly improved with um, Internet Explorer 9. So this is the ACID 3 test, and IE9 scores a 95 out of 100. Now that's not bad. Uh, I believe that uh, Chrome scores a 100. Let's see. Yeah, Chrome scores a 100, and I think that Firefox 4, this is beta 6. It scores a 97. So it's a little bit behind both of those, but that's certainly um, not bad to be at 95, especially since this is the first beta. Um, I'm sure that by the time the product comes out, which is right now planned for late 2010, early 2011, it will be at 100%. Um, Microsoft historically doesn't have a great track record in terms of web standards, at least the modern web standard community. Uh, they were a, a big uh, player, you know, one of the original members of the W3C consortium, but um, pretty much, you know, for the last, uh, I guess, 10 years, you know, most of us have been kind of saddled with IE6, and, and Microsoft, and until IE8, really wasn't paying a lot of attention to the standard space. Um, that certainly is not the case with IE9. For instance, um, yesterday, Monotype Imaging launched its fonts.com web fonts service. And what, one of the interesting things about this is that this uses the new WOFF format that Microsoft um, helped introduce, which is the new standard for open fonts on the web. And that's actually pretty fascinating. So you can see, um, you know, you're going to be getting better, better font support um, from Microsoft and IE9. So you'll be able to have, you know, different fonts and different styles and the things will be able to look differently and and there's going to be better support for other languages so the web is going to be a better looking place and microsoft is now supporting that in a much more robust way